Today, we're looking at something absolutely amazing and the first of its kind. Many of you are familiar with camping. Many of you have done it in tents. And Tesla changed the industry when they made car camping, the ability to sleep in your car and maintain the HVAC. It was really, really convenient. It's the first electric RV company. And we're gonna be looking at their RV, the Lightship. And today we're gonna be talking with Ben all about his brand new product and the company and everything like that. Thanks for joining me, Ben. Uh, we call it the L1, first in a, you know, first in a line. It is a 27 foot sort of family sized all electric travel trailer. The level of efficiency that you get and in particular aerodynamic efficiency from having a design that goes from, you know, a road mode yeah. where, where the vehicle is collapsed and it's about the height of the truck that's towing it to a camping mode where you get, you know, as, as we'll find, a, a big sort of spacious interior and yeah. a, a large RV while you're at camp. I guess first thing, you know, we talked about that this is very unique in the sense of this is the first RV that's electric, right? Uh, what do we go? We got batteries on the bottom. Yeah, exactly. There are two 40 kilowatt hour batteries uh, up front there. Front. Yep. Between the frame rails okay. of the chassis. We have designed a a propulsion system that we call the light chip range assist system. And basically the the light ship is sensing the force between it and the truck that's towing it and uh, then has a control system that tells the motor which is driving the rear axle how hard to push and this is an alpha prototype okay. meaning that it is um, you know it is fully built it's fully functional it's all integrated together the batteries and the solar system and all of that work to power the trailer it's amazing that i mean i guess you can describe that as kind of like like a bike assist, like for electric bikes, yeah. you start pedaling and it starts helping you to propel as well. And so you're not, you know, exerting as much energy. And so the same thing is your, your electric vehicle is not. Why has nobody else thought of this? It takes a lot of willpower and a lot of conviction and a lot of good investors and just passion and momentum to get something like this from an idea to a vehicle on the road in many people's hands. So let's talk about the exterior. I'm sure people are looking at this going like, this is wild. If you were at the takeover, you got to see it in person. Yeah. Uh, so we've got, was it four quad wheels, two on each side? Yeah, you call it a double axle trailer. So okay. it's, you know, two two wheels per side. You know, it's 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 something we're all learning about. So we're, you know, we're doing th little things like body work here yeah. and there. And, um, you know, we're always we're always fixing up this vehicle to look, look its best between between the windows. I mean, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's wild. To try to sum it up, it there is something about this design that is very automotive mm -hmm. inspired. So, um, you know, some of the, the thinking there is around having surfaces that integrate really well with each other for a, a good functional reason, which is to make the vehicle more efficient because yeah. if the window stood off of the body, that will be create, create it. Yeah. Right. And that's what I've been noticing is that even in the completely collapse is like, it just looks like like a spaceship. <laughs> it's it's like a spaceship. It's like a yeah. bullet. Um, what are these kind of like doors on the outside? Like here, are these like storage or the access to like some of the electronics and things like that? Yep. Yeah. This is exterior storage. We can we can take a peep on the other side. Yeah. Um, you can see that there's there's a box on the front that we call the tongue box. This is yeah. a, it's it's primarily there for aerodynamics as well, but it also covers. Um, you know, much of what is uh, sort of some of the guts of, of this prototype. Yeah. This is our, our thermal system. It's also our, so that would be to, you know, to keep the batteries and the electronics uh, at the right temperature. It is also our HVAC system. So all of the, the cabin heating and cooling, or at least the loud bits of that. Oh, system. so that's not even inside yeah. yet. Now you've got a much quieter cabin because now all your HVAC is outside. Um, our product design philosophies and bringing this together is that everything would be built in and not bolted on. Did you used to RV or did you know anything prior to this about RVing? Where I really got into to RVing and Lightship was um, right as, as the pandemic started, I uh, sort of had been, had been looking into RVing because I had a side project to electrify food trucks in the Bay Area that I'd, I'd, I'd kind of taken on on a, on a whim. I got so sort of excited about the prospect of, of building an electric RV company and had, had always, you know, I love road tripping. I love, I love the outdoors in general. So that that kind of spoke to me. Y YouTube crowd, I hope you can see that up on the roof because um, it's pretty well hidden. The entire roof of the vehicle is a solar array. So, oh my God. Um, yeah, there's a, there's a little over two kilowatts of solar in the fixed wow. portion. I noticed that it's built in. It's not like built really? to like a typical solar panel. This is this is another one of those things where if you want the vehicle to maintain its its high performance, it, you know aerodynamic performance in particular, you have to integrate the solar into the rest of the body, so it yeah. becomes a part of a unified form. Literally, I mean, a completely off the grid home, like no longer an RV. It's no longer just a bed to sleep in. 
which was the last thing we looked at. Now we're looking at a full on home, a home that is powered by batteries, solar. You can plug it in if you need to, but you can absolutely just take this, drive into the mountains, drive anywhere you want, park it. And if there's sun, you're essentially good to go and, and live that kind of lifestyle. Let's jump inside, can I ask you? I can't wait. I'm like looking through the windows and it just looks so good. Yeah, I might just sleep here tonight. First things that you notice are, yeah, yeah you got, a, you got a, a really tall ceiling. This, yeah. this is, um, this is very unique for, for a travel trailer like this. Normally it's, you know, it's maybe six, three, six, four yeah. overhead. This is a, it's closer to a residential ceiling. So it's about a seven and a half foot. Yeah. I think that plus having the panoramic windows all the way around that, that creates the sense of spaciousness that you get in it. Um, you know, this is a, this is like this, the size of a micro apartment. It's a very small studio apartment. Yeah. It's a but huge, it doesn't huge feel like that. It, yeah, a small space. And yet um, some of the design elements of how it how it's laid out and how it's built uh, do not make you feel small, make it feel. Yeah, and I remember from Takeover, right? Like that was outside. So we had, a, we had all these windows with sun beaming in and it felt like you were not enclosed. It felt like you were outside essentially. Like there was so much light. I was even joking that like, Man, this would be the perfect studio. If I was single, no wife, no kids, and sorry, wife, but you know, like if, if it was solo, I would absolutely buy this, live life on the road anywhere, anytime, any place, and just film because it always, the lighting always looked great. You have so many windows. I mean, this is not, yeah. nothing looks cheap in here. Um, so let's start with the, I guess, the nose or the front of it. Sure. Um, the, yeah, the layout is, it's a, so the, the bedroom is up front here. So it's mm -hmm. a full queen bed. It's actually stowed away right now. So it's more of like a, a lounge space so you know you can you hang out with your kids dur here during during the day so did you have to custom make that because it's like a unique shape yeah sure yeah um or at least the you know the 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 pads yeah the pads the yeah. pads are um you can be you'll we'll have a there's going to be a, a sleeping mat that goes over top that you can put standard sheets on oh okay, well. cool yeah so you could you could you know use your own pillow yeah yeah the next section is the this is more like the dining area okay. uh, this actually becomes the the second bed as it's laid out here it's in the uh i guess the four person in configuration not shown here we'll offer a lofted bed as oh, well it is almost like a like a tent platform that drops out of the ceiling oh that's one that you can climb up to so you know, now you're stacked and you could fit an extra two there yeah but this this is you know of course a table by day but then it can become the second sleeping surface as well and pool see like that so the whole the whole table drops down this this becomes more like a full-sized bed we will have a partition that comes down here so like a blind oh basically so yeah this is a way to separate visually yeah. the front bedroom and get some privacy in there from oh, yeah. from the main space we've got this really nice like just ambient lighting that goes all around that kind of mm -hmm. just gives it this this is the first time i've actually seen with the lights on mm -hmm. um which kind of just gives it this very like chill mode like yeah. just relax maybe winding down for the evening which i like and i'm sure this is all controllable right all the lighting oh, sure. everything like that yeah yeah here to to jump to it a bit we have a you know custom in-house developed infotainment system as well since this is basically uh this is kind of like your portal yeah into the light ship this is the way that you see everything that's happening yep on it and also control it um i think so you can you know you can go in for instance do all of the all of your all of your lights uh, you can do your your climate control see the state of all your doors and windows make yeah. sure they're all closed before you leave this is also where you raise and lower the top half of the vehicle that we call the, the canopy to go yeah. between camping mode. Wow, this is a really well-designed app. What happened, just crazy thought, what happened if you closed the canopy while we were in here? Um, th basically, this point, yeah. point where the the roof starts to rake in yeah. a little bit, that point comes down to about here. This, the headliner here comes to within a couple inches of the, the top of the faucet. So then table raises, this becomes, you know, the eating, dining, playing cards, whatever you want to do, you know, kind of space. I see that we've got some, I think big question always like people would ask about like storage, right? And so this unit is very streamlined, very clean. Um, and so your things, everyone's, I mean, I think this kind of lifestyle is very minimal, but people mm -hmm. still have their things. Um, I'm seeing a couple stuff I'm seeing Bag down here, bags up here, and then this bag that's floating up there. Talk to me about storage. Um, the storage, uh, the, the way the storage is laid out in general is you have a, a an exterior storage garage under the bed there. So that's where you could put your big stuff like, um, you know, luggage and duffel bags. Yeah. Or so that's your room outside. Okay. There, pretty big. 
um, and it's passed through on both both sides. You can oh, access cool. from from the doors on both sides. There's going to be a bit of under seat storage space mm -hmm. here. You can see you can sort of see some of it already. Yeah, in the production version, that seat will flip up. Yeah, uh, and then there's a there's an interesting uh, storage system we've been we've been uh, affectionately calling it the garage. Not it. And the idea, for instance, with these these duffels is that. Okay, you have a lot of overhead window space in there, but if you're a larger family or if maybe you're a couple, but you're going out for a long time, like a couple months or something like that, you need an initial overhead storage. And um, so you can put, the, you can basically trade window space for these overhead duffels and you can stack up um, five or so of those on these blue rails. Yeah. You can call them beer rails. We'll bring another three up here. And so that's sort of like your your flexible storage yeah configurable storage shot it then there's a storage console here as well so you can see there's you know somebody put their pillow in there nice four there's four of those bins oh cool yeah one two three four that go down the length so you know four people in the family each person gets a bin yeah yeah that's that's sort of the idea and then i see wireless charging here too yep yeah a couple of wireless charging pads there this is a this is a trash area it's a trash bin oh nice there this is all of your kind of sort of kitchen storage area. So, you know, there's space for oh, wow. consoles and pots and pans under here. I mean, we don't have that, but that's, that's sort of your main kitchen storage space separate from luggage and garage. There, you know, there's spots for shoes yeah. and things like that as well. Um, then we're back in the kitchen here. So it is a, you know, it's like a, it's like a little, little modern. I love it. Yeah, it's, it's very clean, very modern. And you got a nice big, you know, big sink. Yep. Yeah, the farmhouse style sink. Um, pl plenty of counter space. Yeah. The, the appliance stack is that you've got a, a double drawer fridge here. So like this, this is oh, one drawer, and this is two. Sorry. And they're both fridges. This is both fridge. This is freezer. Oh wow, that yep. is cool. It's se separate, pretty big pull-out freezer. Yep. Uh, I don't know what to call this. I've just been calling it the junk drawer. I think, I think yeah. uh, sponges, things to clean your dishes, things like that. We then the the last stack here is an induction cooktop. Um, okay. This is this is great. I don't, I don't know if you cook an induction yet. It's super fast. So induction cooktop, you need know, boil water really fast. Um, of course, it, it ties into the fact that everything in here is electric. Yep. Um, you get a microwave there. Nice full size microwave. Yep. Full microwave um, here. Yeah. Oh, you got to be kidding! Get yeah. dishwasher too. Well, I guess you don't need that sponge then, because then you just throw it in a dishwasher. Probably not. It's you know it's kind of funny because this um, this seems like it, certainly this is a luxury. It's a, it's a convenience to yeah. wash your dishes. Part of the way that we justify it as well is because you know what we are one of the few, if not the only, RV that can support running a, a dishwasher like this, even if you're off grid mm -hmm. or anywhere, because we have the power to do it. Right. What and once you are able to. Once we can guarantee that you'll have the power to run something like this, it turns out that this is very economical on water. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you can get. I think it's about it's about double as water efficient to use a you know a dishwasher versus hand washing. Yeah, yeah, we're looking at options where um, call it like a sort of like an essential package and then more like a chef's package. Yeah, yeah. You get to choose between do I want everything or yeah. something more minimal. Oh, my favorite place. Yeah, welcome to the bathroom. Right? I think the, the main story of the bathroom is we, we sort of asked ourselves at the outset, you know, what, what what's going to make this feel like a really great experience? Yeah. There were two things on the inside that, that had to be there. And so that's what we did. We It's a basically a um, full wraparound countertop. This, this portion of counter here actually converts between when I'm in the, the shower section to give you more here, space, give me space, and then you can pop out. So you have, you know, you have sort of a yeah, double fall and yeah. counter space to use it just as a bathroom. Uh, you can see rain shower. Uh, we felt like it made a lot of sense to dedicate enough space to, to build this as a dry bath. Basically, pull down a partition, and one person can be taking a shower while the other person is is you know like getting ready. There's also storage here in the corner for like mm -hmm. shampoos and stuff. There, there, there's a lot, but I think you guys have pretty nailed this thing down. So, like, how much is an electric mobile home that looks as amazing as this and has everything that this offers going to cost the users? Turns out it's a hundred and twenty-five thousand dollar question. Uh, start starts at one twenty-five, and um, you know you can option it up to one fifty, one sixty, something like that. But it's part part of um, part of the goal here is that you know we we know this is an expensive vehicle. This is like our 
this is like our roadster or our model s it's you know it's a flagship product but we also um we you know it's pretty easy to buy an rv for for four million dollars oh yeah for up and we did not um we didn't want to build even a first product that was inaccessible to you know totally inaccessible to to the market and um, there still had to be a big market for it because part of um you know part of what we want the legacy of the company to be is to be one of if not the key company that sort of uh you know pushed the rv industry towards electrifying and towards 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 better products like this mm-hmm. um for at least for, you know very different and kind of unique products and um so we 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 basically decided to okay we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna keep this in a, in a, a fairly accessible price point um I, I mean this is this is amazing uh thank you so much for walking me through this amazing uh vehicle um if you guys have any questions leave them down in the comments um and let me know what, what do you think about this would you buy uh this electric rv the first of its kind um that looks like this thanks so much appreciate it charm yeah yeah absolutely the light ship the lights on this ship it's the light ship i got it right this time hey I've seen under my analytics that about half of you are not subscribed to the channel. So please, if you wouldn't mind, and if you're enjoying this video, subscribe to the channel. Just tell me you love me. And if you like the video and you like the content, hit the thumbs up button. Well, let me get back to going to the potty.